Hey guys, I'm Jim. I edit photos. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm diving back into a little bit more of a discussion around Luminar Neo. I've been in a couple of recent briefings with them and today they've had a new press release sharing a little bit more information about this forthcoming app. So we're going to jump into it. The first thing is there's new pricing now. It continues to go up a little bit over time as they get closer and closer to launch. And so um, you may recall there was early bird pricing. Anyway, uh, this is the new pricing starting today, going through November 17th, $54 if, uh, if you're getting one seat of Luminar Neo and you already own Luminar or Aurora, something like that. So still, I think, uh, very inexpensive for everything that it's going to have. And we're going to talk about all that in a minute. And remember, there's the 30-day money-back guarantee from the date of delivery. And so you can purchase today, get the best price, and then after you get it, you have 30 days to decide if you want to keep it. It is expected sometime this winter. I don't know an exact date. I'm hoping December. We'll find out. But there it is. There's different combinations of, of offers. You can see that there. I'm going to go ahead and jump into what we're talking about. And I shared a slide similar to this in a previous video. People have asked me, what is NeoGem? Like, there's Luminar AI, there's Luminar 4. It, to me, it's the best of both. So I think of it as like Luminar 5 AI Pro. To be clear, that is not what it's called, but it's got the best of Luminar 4, which is the ability to use uh, the same tool multiple times as well as layers. It's got all the benefits of Luminar AI, which is all these amazing AI tools stuck together in a single product. So Luminar AI is about quick edits and it's template-based. And Luminar Neo is going to allow you to do more advanced edits uh, with layers and things like that. And so that's kind of the uh, sort of how I think about Luminar Neo. But um, here's what I understand so far. To be clear, I don't have the product yet. And um, this is not an official announcement from them. This is my understanding of what's coming over. So you're going to have things like Accent AI, Structure AI, basically the AI tools that you may be using um, today, uh, the face and skin and body AI, portrait bokeh, atmosphere AI, and sky AI, which is sky replacement, those will be coming over from Luminar AI to Luminar Neo. You're not going to get augment and sky AI, but that doesn't matter. And the reason why is because in the new stuff that's coming, you're going to have overlays and layers, and that is effectively what augmented sky AI is. It's the ability to add an overlay on top of your photo. So because you have layers and overlays built into Luminar Neo, the fact that augmented sky AI as a tool individually doesn't come over, is it's kind of redundant, to be honest. So you're going to have all those amazing things plus new stuff. Relight AI, Mask AI, and we've talked about that, or I've talked about this in previous videos. This is my playlist on Luminar Neo. Um, if you're interested and don't know anything about this tool yet, I recommend checking those videos out in order. But Relight, Mask, Dusk Removal, and Line Removal, we'll talk a little bit about that. Portrait Background Removal AI, Layers and Overlays, we'll talk a little bit about that in this video. Luminar Share app, they've shared a little bit more detail about that. That's pretty cool. And of course, it's a new engine, which I know some people are like, oh, another new engine engine, but modular, scalable, I think this is the one that they're going to build upon for the future. That's my feeling as I understand it. But keep in mind, even though it's a new engine, they are also providing a utility to help you transfer your library from Luminar 4 or Luminar AI into Luminar Neo, so you're not going to lose that. Um, although I don't believe that transfer utility is going to be out at launch. I think that'll be out in the early part of next year. Regardless, new engine, lots of power, lots of capability. The first thing they're talking about uh, in the press release today is dust removal AI and is sharing a little bit more information about it. But as you know, it's automatic removal of lens and sensor dust. And as I said in previous videos, I've got so many photos that are just honestly ruined because there's so much crud in them that needs to be removed that I'm like, I give up to be honest sometimes because it's so much, uh, so time consuming to go in and do that. This is going to uh, basically do that automatically, but you're also going to have some manual controls if you want to refine it. And they've said that you're still going to have the erase and the clone tools. So you're going to be able to take advantage of all these things together to get rid of the dust spots in your images. Now, here's a visual that they've provided. This is not an official screenshot. I don't think they've locked the user interface. But um, as soon as I have that and can share it, I will. But you see here, dust spots. I don't know if that's a tick box that you just click yes uh, and it's part of a race or if it's going to be a separate tool so uh, you know feel free to ask me questions but i don't know the answers but you know as you see here you can see the before and after example this is something i think that's very familiar to many of us um, and here's another one right so same kind of thing i have countless photos even with 
my uh, new newer lenses and things like that. Sometimes, you know, something's in the air and it gets on your lens and you don't know it. Um, and maybe you've got a few of them. I found that in some recent photos. I was like, oh, everything looks clean. And then I get it in Luminar and you may not even see it when you begin editing, but as you start doing editing and changing contrast, you're like, oh, I've got spots and I've got 17 of them or whatever. Ideally, this is gonna take them out automatically. We'll see how it works in real life, but regardless, you'll be able to go in and refine that if you want to. And here's another example, and I'm gonna be honest, I've got countless photos like this that have tons of these little tiny spots that are all over the sky and in the water if it's reflected. And honestly, sometimes I give up. This tool uh, is gonna hopefully allow me to not give up on those and go back and edit some really old photos. Another cool thing they've talked about is line removal automatic removal of power lines, same kind of thing. These, um, these I don't give up because it's uh, too time consuming from the standpoint of like with dust removal, I'm like, I've got 600 spots and I'll never get it done and I quit. These I give up because it's hard. Like, I don't know about you, but I've gone in there and you race and you race part of a line or you race the entire line and then you get to the end, you're like, that doesn't look very good, you gotta redo it. And so sometimes I give up on this because it's just difficult to get it right. And so, um, this is hopefully going to be a dream come true, um, including cl complex situations like buildings where the line is not just in the clear blue sky where it's easy to detect and isolate, but across buildings and things like that. And again, still offering the erase and the clone and stamp. And once again, this is a visual, not an actual screenshot from the app, but you can see the before and after. It looks really clean and including like, I look here like uh, where this power line is overlapping the building and getting really close to that little um, antenna thing. And over here, of course, it looks great. So I'm eager to try this out on my own. And once again, not a screenshot, so I don't know. Is the power lines gonna be just a box that you turn on in the erase tool or a separate tool and then you can refine it with the, I don't know. So we'll find out more as things get closer, but I think this is gonna be a really useful tool. And you can see here, I mean, really interesting, um, I think use of, um, you know, this tool is gonna come in really handy. And I also, I'm trying to look at things like this, where, oops, um, where it's basically really close to these palm fronds. And, you know, it looks like it's done a good job. It's hard to tell exactly. I don't know if there's uh, gonna be artifacts. We're gonna wait and see. But so far, I'm really excited about this. And one more example of this tool where it's basically removed all those power lines. And instead of having this power line ridden shot of the Hollywood sign, you've got the, um, uh, the clear one. So I'm excited about that. I think it's gonna be pretty awesome. Overlays, now this is, I'm not sure if overlays is a separate tool that's part of the layers stack or if it's uh, a component of layers. I'm not really sure exactly how it's gonna be implemented, but they're including a built-in collection of overlays, including an object library. That's why Augmented Sky AI is not coming over because this tool having layers with overlays effectively replaces it but you can also add your own library of content. So they've got a few example shots here where before you can see the skyline there and then afterwards, it looks like you framed that with like a window uh, pane. So kind of an interesting look there. Uh, and same thing here, uh, the, the before shot being a shot of a model and then the, the after, of course, they've overlaid some like uh, autumn colored leaves to kind of match the color of her dress and that sort of thing. So you can basically get a lot of power and flexibility to do creative and interesting and different things. I'm really curious what all is included in this object library because this is something I've done in the past where you just kind of, uh, for lack of a better word, you build composites um, and it's not always easy, but with the mask AI tool, which we've talked about in previous videos and all the powerful masking that's gonna be included, that's gonna be AI based and therefore effectively automatic. I think you're gonna have a lot of power and control using these overlays to kind of go do things that you can only imagine doing today. So I'm excited about that. I think it's gonna be really fun and certainly very useful. And the last thing that they're talking about in today's press release is Luminar Share. So it's a mobile companion app. It's not an editing app. It's not Luminar Neo for mobile. It's just called Luminar Share. So I just wanna be clear about that, but you can sync and share photos between mobile devices and Luminar Neo, and then take advantage of the built-in uh, native OS sharing to share uh, via your social channel. So here's what happens for me today. I go out and I take photos with this device, my iPhone 12, and I love to do it, but I get home and I'm like, oh, I wanna edit that photo. So what do I do? I go in and then I email it to myself and then I go to my email and then I download it to my desktop and then I drag it into a single image edit or I put it in a folder that Luminar's watching 
and then I go edit the photo, and then I'm like, oh, this is cool. Maybe I'm gonna put it on Flickr, or maybe I just wanna send it back to myself and put it on Instagram or whatever. So I email it back to myself and save it on my device, back to my device for my email. All that's gone. This looks like the easy, uh, the easy button, for lack of a better word. I'm really excited about this because I do like to edit my mobile photos in Luminar. I don't really like using some of the traditional editing apps that um, people may use, some of the different things that are mobile only. I just prefer Luminar, it's just better in my opinion. So you can see here, this, this is just basically gonna give us a lot of power and flexibility for editing uh, photos taken with our mobile device as well as sharing. So wireless transfer, it's gonna be using a QR code. So you're gonna be secure. You're not gonna have to load it into a cloud somewhere and then transfer it to the app via cloud and then transfer back. It, it's a direct connect between your device, uh, your devices, right? Your mobile device and let's say your laptop that has Neo on it. To be clear, you don't pay extra for this app. It is gonna be something you download via the App Store, but you're gonna to have to have Neo to use it because you gotta pair it with Neo. So you have to buy Neo to get it, but the or to use it, I should say, but the app itself is not gonna be an extra charge. So it's basically allowing you to quickly take these photos from mobile, put them in Neo, edit to your heart's content, take them from Neo, send them back to your device, share on Instagram, for example. So lots of power, lots of control, lots of good stuff. I'm excited about Neo, I hope you are. There's links down below if you wanna check it out. It is, uh, again, continues to be on pre-order, coming out later this winter, and if you use those links, it is an affiliate link, they pay me a referral commission. It doesn't cost you anything more, but it helps me out, and uh, as you know, I'll be here making lots of videos about it because I'm really excited. I think it's gonna be an awesome tool. So that's it for this one, my friends. Thanks for watching and hanging out. I'll be back soon with more stuff, and you guys take care of yourselves. Stay safe out there, I'll see you soon, and adios.